places and the sun pillars from all the cities of Judah. And the rain rested under him. And he built cities of defense in Judah, since the land had rest. And he had no fighting in those days, because Almighty God had given him rest. Okay, thank you, my brother. Yeah. It's time for believers to confront these evil altars in America. You know, I mean, we read the Bible and read about how they did all this idolatry. They're doing it here. If, if any, I didn't watch it, but I just saw, you know, previews of, I think it was the Grammy Awards. Man, they, it's, all, it's straight out now. They're not hiding nothing. Straight out idolatry, evil worship. Some kind of other award they had. They had the bull, you know, like the bull doing uh, Exodus where the people worship. The, I mean, they, they, they put it in your face. They're not hiding it anymore. And we still say nothing. We still are quiet. What does it take for us to wake up? What does it take for us to stand up? James chapter 2 verse 20 says, faith without works is dead. So we're praying, we're fasting, but we're not putting any works in anything. We're not standing up to anything. We're not saying not here is not going to happen here. We used to do that decades ago. Am I right? Used to be done. No, you're not bringing that in the school system. No, you're not bringing that book in the school system, the witch and indoor and all. You're not bringing, you're not teaching that. That's not going to be part of the curriculum. We used to do that. Now we do nothing but stay quiet and sit under our 501c congregations making no ripples at all while the world goes to hell. I tell you, the Father's looking at that. Am I right? It's time for us to stand up against institutions that promote pedophilia. That's the next thing they're pushing. They've already lowered the age where you can, you can mess with people under age and it's legal now. And they've been doing this for years. Now they want it legal so they don't go to jail for doing it. And the leaders say, Nothing. Child gender choices. Homosexuality is being taught as an alternative lifestyle. And our religious leaders say nothing. We need to be like the Ashkenazi Jews that are intolerant of any free speech that seems to threaten their false construct of anti-Semitism. We need to stand up and not apologize, shut down and have people fired for bringing this craziness in our system. Why, why won't we do that? Why won't we stand up? It was never just about allowing sick, mentally ill, sexual degenerates wanting to live their lives in peace. That's what it started off as being, but it never was about that. They always wanted to transform our tolerance for them into celebrated conformity. That's always been the end game, and that's where we are right now. Case in point, many of our elementary schools, they are allowing drag queens to come into the schools and do story time. And we say nothing. In our middle schools, queers are allowed to come in and instruct sex education and instruct our kids on how they can decide what their gender is, is their choice. Then you have part of the alphabet community that does not want to identify as a gender. Isn't that something? What's that word, my brother? non binary yeah, all new words being introduced to us. We get new vocabulary, non-binary. Who are you to change grammar in the world? But because we are so blind, Brother Dante, we say, okay, don't, don't want to ruffle any feathers, don't want to make any, anybody mad, don't want to seem like we're hating on you, you know, because they use that Trump card, hate, hate, hate. Oh, no, don't want to seem like I'm hating you and discriminating, so we just be quiet. The alphabet movement is reconstructing language and grammar. Here's an example of their absurdity. Whenever you refer to me, even if I'm thousands of miles away, you must abandon the rules of grammar. Now, you English people, you'll catch this. You must abandon the rules of grammar and parrot 
whatever gibberish I assign to you. That's what the alphabet community is doing. That's not only absurd, it's arrogant in the extreme. The trans agenda has infiltrated our society largely through language. They talk about preferred pronouns, but a pronoun is a grammatical construct. It has to be deployed according to the laws of grammar, not the fickle whims of the individual to whom it refers. I know I'm getting deep, but bear with me. You can play this back, you'll catch it. Confident, mentally ill individuals have forced society to march to the beat of their rebellious drums. Yeah, I said rebellious, because when you're living that life, you're living in rebellion. Not to me, to Almighty Yah. You can say what you want to say. So they're forcing society to march to the beat of their rebellious drum. You have teachers who don't identify with their genders in our school systems. They replace the word miss with mix, M-X. Don't call me miss or mister, call me mix, because they don't identify with a gender. Or they, re they take the word, instead of saying yes ma'am or yes sir, refer to me as day, yes day. Day, and we allowing this craziness. Let me give you a few examples. If I'm standing, which I am, in the pulpit, okay, follow me. I'm standing in the pulpit, and you want to communicate to someone else about the fact that I'm standing in the pulpit, you would say, he is standing in the pulpit. Y'all follow me? It would be grammatically and factually incorrect to say she is standing in the pulpit as she denotes a female, which I am not. Y'all agree with that, right? Yeah. Are y'all following me? Yeah. It would be incorrect to say they are standing in the pulpit. That indicates more than one person standing in the pulpit, yeah. which I am not. Do you follow me? It would be incorrect to say Z, like the letter Z, or Zer, are standing in the pulpit because that would seem to suggest that there is some sort of space alien in the pulpit. And as far as you know, I am not. Do you follow me? But this is what is being done. And they're forcing our kids to direct and address them in those matters. I'm telling you, it's time for us to shut this down, okay? And if we need to start our own school system, we need to come together. I'm talking to you on Facebook. If you're a minister and you got churches, you know, and you're congregants are faced with this, get together with other ministers. It's time for us to come together and have our own school systems, you know. But in the meantime, it's time for us to go to the school system and shut this stuff down. If we come together as one, we can be in control and stop letting the deviants. See, one thing about them, that, yeah, give a hand clap for that. The reason why they get their way because they voice their opinion and they're loud. The loudest one in the room most of the time gets their way. Yes, it's time for us to be loud. Right. Am I right? Yeah. It's time out for all that quietness. Mm -hmm. Can we just all get along? No, we can't all get along. You're not going to bring that here. And if that offends you, so be it. My brothers and sisters, we are living in the last days. This is Sodom and Gomorrah on steroids. I hope you see that. Right is wrong and wrong is right. How well did Isaiah prophesy in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 through 25, saying everything would be right is wrong, wrong is right, and people would declare things that should not be. But let's go back to King Asa. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 14, and my brother read verse 9 through 14, and stop at 14. Let's see what this righteous man did, because Yah wants you to get his attention. He will give you his attention, but let's see how you get that done. And Zerah the Cushite came out against them with an army of a million men, 300 chariots, and he came to Mauritius. And Asa went out 
against him. And they set battle in array in the valley of Tisbethah at Maresh. And Asa called to Almighty Yah his Elohim and said, Almighty Yah, there is no one but you to help mm. between the mighty and the powerless. Help us, O Almighty Yah, our Elohim, for we rest on you. And in your name, we go against this crowd. And Almighty Yah, you are our Elohim. And do not let man prevail against you. And Almighty Yah smote the Cushites before Asa and Judah. And the Cushites fled. And Asa and the people who were with him pursued them to Barak. And the Cushites fell until none was left alive for them. They were broken before Almighty Yah and his army. And they took very much spoil and struck all the cities around Barak. For the fear of Almighty Yah came upon them. And they plundered all the cities. But there was exceedingly much spoil in them. And they also struck the camps of the herdsmen and captured many sheep and camels and returned to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember the theme of this is how to get Almighty Yah's attention. You see, my brothers and sisters, if we do what is required of us, then it is nothing for the Almighty to destroy the stronghold of the enemy. Yes, sir. It's, it's no big deal for him to destroy the strongholds of the enemy. When we become properly that's the thing. When we become properly aligned with our Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. then the fear of Elohim will come upon the wicked. But we have to become properly aligned. It's not going to happen the other way around. We can't call upon him and we don't, we're not in alignment with our Heavenly Father. See, Asa was properly aligned with the Heavenly Father. As the leader of Israel, he got things straight. He put things in order. Hallelujah. Let's break down how did Asa get Yah's attention. Let's unpack this. You see, there was no time for a fast in this situation. Here are some bullet points on why he got a quick response from Almighty Yah. Follow me. Asa did that which was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, as did his father David. 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 11. I'm going to go through these bullet points. So ask yourself, are you doing what's right in the eyes of a heavenly father? Second bullet point. He commanded Judah to seek Almighty Yah and do the law and commandments. 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 4. So not only did he do what was right, he commanded his subjects, Judah, to do what was right and follow the law and commandments. Are you instructing your congregation to do what's right and follow the law and commandments? Or are you just saying, hey, his grace is sufficient, live your life, do what you want, we all sin. That, there's a difference. There's, there's a total difference in instructing your people and your children to do what's right or saying, hey, I know y'all young folks, you know, y'all gonna, y'all go ahead and do y'all own thing. I was once young. No. That's, that's not how you do it. 